Hey guys, it's Brett Williams from BrettFX.com here again. Are you ever completely baffled by the logic behind drop zones in Final Cut Pro 10? Or are you ever frustrated that you can't get the exact portion of the clip you want to use into the drop zone? Or even worse, all you get is a freeze frame. Well, in this tutorial, I hope to demystify drop zones for you, show you how to precisely get the footage you want to use into the drop zone, and even adjust it after the fact, and avoid that dreaded freeze frame. I'll also show you how to pan and scale your clip within the drop zone with on-screen controls, even if the plugin or the template you're using doesn't have on-screen controls. So if that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of new tutorials when they come out. Thanks for your support. Let's get started. So I've already got some footage in the timeline and for this first example we're going to use a transition, one of my own uh, Bread Effect split screen transitions. Drag it to the cut point here, select it, and you'll see it has two drop zones. Uh, drop zone one, drop zone two. We're going to focus just on drop zone one here on the left. So with the transition selected we're going to head over to the inspector on the right here and find drop zone one. And we're going to click on the drop zone image well here, which brings up the dual display here for choosing your media. And I want to choose this girl with the uh, camera. So over here in the browser, I'm going to click on her. And over here in the bottom of this dual display, click apply clip, which adds the media to our drop zone. So let's play that back and see how it looks. Ah, I knew that was going to happen. I got the dreaded freeze frame effect, but I cheated a little bit. How drop zones work in Final Cut Pro is whatever frame you choose up here when you're scrubbing through your media, that frame is going to sync up with the very first frame of your template or your transition or your plugin and your effect. And I cheated and I clicked way down here on the end. Some of y'all might have noticed that, um, which chose one of the very last frames which synced up with the very beginning of the template here. And it didn't have much media, so it might play a few frames there. But then when you run out of media in a drop zone, Final Cut goes ahead and freezes the last frame of your media. So anytime you see a freeze frame in a drop zone, it's the last frame of that media you chose. And so you need to choose a spot earlier in the media, or you need to use a compound clip. We'll cover that in just a minute. So for this transition, we're just going to reselect that drop zone over here. Go back and choose a point earlier. I see she's clicking on the shutter, so... So I'm going to click on a frame right before she clicks the shutter, and that's going to sync up with the very... I'm going to click Apply Clip here. And that frame's going to sync up with the very beginning of our transition. So when we play this back, she slides in, clicks the shutter, slides out, transitions over. Perfect. So that works, that method works pretty well on a simple, quick template where your drop zone is right at the beginning of the template or the transition or plugin. And if you don't get the frame you want, you know, you can click over here in the inspector and, you know, pick another frame, you know, and just, just kind of keep whittling at it till you get it just the way you like. But if you have a longer template where maybe um, your drop zone is not right at the beginning of the clip, which is often the case, you could have an intro template with, you know, it's 30 seconds long with 100, um, with a big montage of different uh, drop zones within it. So I'm going to pick a little bit more complicated one. This is uh, split screen number six. And so this transition is actually the one you would get for free if you downloaded the free sample of BreadFX split screen transitions on BreadFX.com. So let's take a look at what this transition looks like. It has six different drop zones. And we're going to focus just on drop zone number five here. And so over in the inspector, I'm going to scroll down to drop zone number five. Since it's kind of a vertical, I think I'll click on the drop zone well and go over to our footage and choose this couple here. 
And I'm going to choose right before he points, just so I have something to kind of to go by. So I'm going to click a frame right before he points and click Apply Clip. And let's see how that works out for us. And it didn't work out. I didn't see him point at all. That's because Drop Zone 5 starts more than halfway through this, uh, this transition. And the frame I clicked on is syncing up with the very beginning of our, um, of our template. So it's syncing up somewhere back in here. And by the time we get to them on screen, they're ready to walk out. So what we need to do is find the point where we want that to occur. Let's see, right as it comes in full, I want him to start pointing. Go over to our footage. Mark an in on the footage. And I'll grab a little extra footage here and drag it down to the timeline. I'm going to snap it to the playhead so that frame of the footage is right where I want it, above our effect in the timeline. And now I can trim back our footage so it fills, so it's completely above our transition in the timeline. His hand is still pointing right at the spot I want, right after the middle of the transition there. What Final Cut Pro 10 makes us do now is turn this into a compound clip to make this work. So we say Option G, and I'm going to accept the uh, default title there. So now I have a compound clip of just the media we want to use sitting in the timeline at the exact spot we want it, right above our um, transition that has the drop zone in it. So I'm going to reselect our uh, transition, go over to the inspector, um, click on that same drop zone well again, and instead of going up to the browser to choose our media, I'm going to find the very first frame of this compound because that frame is going to sync up with the beginning of our clip. So we're essentially back timing the media or giving it enough pre-roll. So when it reaches the spot where I want him to point, it's all synced up. So I'm going to click on the very first frame of this compound, click apply clip, and the compound's still in our way here. So I'm going to select it, press V to turn it off and hide it. You could delete it if you want, and it would still be in the browser somewhere. But I'm going to leave it here just for reference. Play it back. Yep, now he's pointing. Perfect. And just to show you, it's synced up perfectly. You can, I've got the um, compound right above it in the timeline. If I press V to, to kind of toggle that on and off, you'll see it's the same frame. Okay, so one important side note, I forget that some people don't realize, drop zones in Final Cut Pro don't support audio. So even though our beach footage here doesn't have any audio, if it did, I would probably just re-enable it here in the timeline and drag it down beneath where it could be heard, but it wouldn't be seen. Or alternatively, you could detach the audio and disable just the video portion. Okay, so I'm going to drag this back up here. Okay, so that worked great, but what if you didn't have enough footage to roll all the way back here to the beginning of the clip? I'm going to do one more example. Let's delete this compound here, select the transition, and I'm going to go over to the inspector and clear out that drop zone. Click the little X next to it. So down here in the timeline, I've got drop zone 5 clear again. I want to put our girl with the camera in drop zone 5. So I'm going to get the playhead right where drop zone 5 is coming in. And I want to use the very beginning of our camera clip, almost the beginning, right here as she's lifting up the camera. That's what I want to see as Drop Zone 5 slides in. So I'm going to mark an endpoint on her media right where I want her. And let's grab a little extra marking out here. I'm going to drag this down to the timeline and snap it to the playhead right where I want it. And I'm going to trim this back. So it's at the end of our transition, just to be tidy. And I can try to roll this out, but as you can see, I've run out. I don't have enough media to roll it all the way back to the beginning. 
So I need to fill this space with something, and I'm going to use a uh, solid generator. Let's go over to our generators here, and I'm just going to use a custom solid, um, the black solid here, and drag it down to the timeline. And we're going to trim it up so that it fills the space before the girl with the camera. So now I can select both of these, create a compound clip like we did before with the couple at the beach, select option G. I'll accept the uh, default title there. That's fine. And so now I can select my transition again, go over to the inspector, find drop zone 5, click on it. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make this easier. So I can find the beginning of the clip. There it is. Click on the first frame of that drop zone. Click apply clip. Zoom back out. I'm going to turn off that um, compound clip. Let's see how that looks. That looks like it worked. She slides in, picks up the camera, and slides back out. Just what I wanted. Except, I think she's a little bit off to the right. So I've got one more trick to show you. If I select the transition, I can go up here into the uh, viewer, and I'm going to scale it back to about 50% so I can sort of see what's going on. Uh, these transitions do have uh, on-screen controls for controlling the position and the scale of the elements in your drop zone. I'm going to undo that. But if you didn't have those, Final Cut does provide a kind of hidden feature. You can just double click right on the uh, drop zone area and you're provided with this little on-screen controls. You can see the footage that's not in the drop zone off to the left and to the right. You can even hold down shift and click right on it and you get the little hand and you can drag left and right to reposition her. I think that looks pretty good. If you needed to scale you could drag a corner or the top or the bottom. And it even lets you hold down Option and drag a corner. And it keeps it proportional, but drags it, scales it toward the opposite corner. And the same goes with uh, dragging one of the edges at the top or the side. And so I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click in the timeline to kind of clear out that uh, on-screen display. And let's take a look. Now it looks like it's got it. I did promise one more trick for those of you that hung out this long. I'm sorry, I almost forgot. Um, since you're using a compound clip as your source for the drop zone in your transition or your plug-in or whatever, um, you can make adjustments without having to reselect this. You can double-click the compound clip to get inside of it. And if you wanted to, since this is now the source for your um, drop zone, you could click on the clip here and adjust the uh, timing of it. I'm going to press T to go into slip and slide mode so I could, uh, I could choose some different frames here as my starting and end frame. And if you wanted to, you could even add, say, a, a title to it. So I'll press Control T and add a, add a title there. Um, I'm going to trim it to the end. And what would our title be? Um, I'll just make it say, you know, photography. Make that a little bit bigger. And if I wanted to, I could add a color correction effect. You know, I could take uh, make her black and white. Go back into the main. So, as you can see, using a compound clip as your source for a drop zone 
is precise. It gives you the ability to adjust the timing after the fact. You can add a color effect or even add some text as we did here. Well, that's about all I got for you. If you like these kind of tutorials and want me to make some more, uh, click subscribe. And don't forget to click the little notification bell down there as well so you'll be notified whenever a new one's available. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.